In this video, we're going to talk about Tinkercad circuits and why you should be using it if you're learning to play around with electronics. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to take a look at Autodesk's Tinkercad. Now, Tinkercad has been around for a while, and the Tinkercad 3D designs are generally thought of as designs made for 3D printing. I'm not going to be going into the 3D designs, but I do want to note that if you have a Fusion 360 Autodesk account, you can just log into Tinkercad or you can set up a free account. So everything here that we're going to be looking at is specifically focused on Tinkercad circuits. So inside of Tinkercad circuits, this is an extremely powerful tool. And hopefully after this video, you'll understand a bit more about it and why you should be using it. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to create a new circuit. And first, we need to talk about basic electronics. So the person that should be using this is either just getting into electronics, things like Arduinos and micro bits, or they want to play around with building out a new design, and they just don't have all of the components on hand. Now, there have been a lot of times when I've been playing around with certain things, and I just haven't had that one component. Now, that's led me to simply just buy up a bunch of stuff. So I've got extras or I've got different parts laying around. But oftentimes, if you're just trying to figure something out, doing it digitally can save you a lot of time and headache. So we're going to take a look at making a basic design with a breadboard and LEDs. And then we're going to talk about Arduinos and micro bits. So first, what I'm going to do with these basic components is I'm going to take a breadboard and place it in the center of my design. From here, I'm then going to add power, and I'm going to add a few LEDs. Now, when I add the LEDs, we have to note that there is an anode and a cathode. So I'm going to place the anode here, and I'm going to add another LED after this. But first, I want to change the colors. Now, it's important to note with LEDs that the different colors will generally have different voltage drops across them. I'm going to be using a yellow LED and hooking it directly up to the 9 volts. So in my case, the real LEDs that I have have about a 2.2 to 2.3 voltage drop across each one. This means that I can get away with just hooking it directly up, and it will likely shorten the life of the LED, but it will work. What I'm going to do with this one selected is just use Control-C and Control-V to copy and paste, and I'm going to just do the same thing over and over again. So now that I have four LEDs here, I'm going to start connecting some wires and add a switch. So I'm just going to place the switch over here. And let's go ahead and just put it right there. And now I want to connect my positive side of my battery to the positive portion of the breadboard and the negative to the negative. Afterwards, I'm going to change the colors of the wire. I'm going to set my positive wire to red and the negative wire to black. Then I want to start connecting my positive wire to my anode. So I'm going to drag from here and just connect it right there. Then I'm going to go from the cathode over to my switch. And then I'm going to go from the switch over to ground. Now, theoretically, the 9 volts should be lining up going to my first anode, which then these are connected in series, should go to this position on my switch, and then the neutral or common position should go back up to ground. If I start the simulation and I flip the switch, you can see that the LEDs turn on. It's telling me that the current going through them is too high, so really in this case I should use a resistor that's appropriately sized, but that's going to go a bit outside of what I want to cover here. So we're going to stop the simulation and we're going to start a new design by going back to Tinkercad and creating a new circuit. So now that we've seen just some basic components, I'm going to use this drop down here and note that we have Arduino, micro bit and some circuit assemblies. I'm going to focus on Arduino and micro bit. So first in the Arduino, you'll notice that there are a bunch of different Arduinos that display here. Now, as we go down through this list, you should see some that are pretty familiar when you look through the tutorials or the samples that are in the Arduino IDE. Things like Blink. Now when we use Blink and we just place this on the screen, this is one of the first tutorials that you'll go through if you get an Arduino for the first time. What we're going to do is start the simulation and you can see that the LED is blinking. Now inside of here we can also click on code and we can see the code for ourselves. 
Now, it's important to note that there are two main ways in which we can see code inside of Tinkercad circuits. We've got block code, and we've also got text code, and there's an in-between called blocks and text. When we go to text, you'll notice that the code looks just like you would inside of the Arduino IDE. The code in Arduino is sort of adapted from C++ code, but you can see here that this programs in the LED that is on pin 13 to blink high and then low based on this delay. So this is great because you can come in with this example without ever building it, and we can do things like we can change the delay. We can have the delay set to 10 instead of 1,000 milliseconds, and then the second delay I'll set to 100. I'll start the simulation, and you can see that it's slowly getting lighter, and then it drops off. So again, this is a way for you to come in and play around with these sample codes without actually having to go through and build out the physical components and attach it. Now, it's a great experiment and a great experience to go through this process, but if you're planning out a new project, sometimes it can be nice to just think about it digitally. Now, another way that we can go in here is let's go ahead and take a look at another Arduino example. As I scroll down, there's LCD, which is another one that's oftentimes problematic to get set up for a new user. If we use this, you can see that it's already set up for us. If we start the simulation, it plays hello world or displays the string, and you can see it's just cycling through a list. If you wanna figure out what's going on, you can take a look at the code. It calls the liquid crystal library. It tells you what pins it's attached to. You see there's a 10K resistor, and it also ends, it has five volts in ground, and then there's a wiper to LCD VO pin. So what that means is if we play the simulation, not only is it playing, but this wiper here allows us to turn on and off the display. So you can see here, we can turn it off and then back on. You can see it's still iterating through. Let's take a look at one more Arduino example before we move on to micro bit. So another Arduino example is the NeoPixels or the WS2811 or 2812 LEDs. Now, these can be extremely fun to play with, but sometimes you might just want to spend a little bit of time working on the code to get the color or the transition just right. Now, myself, I've actually put about 1,500 of these on my house and uh, programmed them through an Arduino, through a Trinket MO to display different colors and, and different routines uh, for the holidays. So I've spent a good bit of time, unfortunately, hard coding <laughs> the, the NeoPixel LEDs and it's really nice to be able to come in, take a look at the code, and just play around with it and get those routines right. Now, unfortunately, when I did this myself, I did it with just an, a string of 50 LEDs rather than playing around with them digitally. Had I known about this at the time, this would have been a much better option for me to play around with. But now that we've seen a handful of Arduino examples, let's take a look at Microbit. Now, Microbit is another sort of similar thing to Arduino where you have a different type of microcontroller. Now, these are actually pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and just drag this one on the screen. I'm going to use the zoom option. And you'll notice that there is a handful of buttons here. There are some buttons on here, and there's actually a, an array of RGB LEDs. When I start the simulation here, you'll notice that some additional bits pop up. We can press different buttons on here, and you can see that they're displaying different things. We have a zero, a one, and a two. We also have these A and B buttons. And over here, we've got temperature, we've got light, and then we've got different options. We can actually rotate this around. We can use options to shake it, and we can move it. We can rotate it. Again, we can sort of do all these different things. Because these micro bits have different sensors built into them, this can be a great way to sort of play around, figure out what the code needs to be and what you need to do to get your code to work. So again, you can take a look at all of the different ways that you can play around with this. This specifically is in Python. Again, the Arduino IDE, that's based off of C. So the code looks a little bit different, but the Python code is similar to what we use in the Fusion 360 API. So another great tool, something else that you can play around with without actually having to get the physical components. 
So hopefully at this point, you've seen that there is a lot of power in Tinkercad circuits. Just coming in here and playing around with it without actually having to buy and set up all the components is a powerful tool that should help you build out your next project a little bit easier. If you have any questions, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.